If I tell you gaming laptop and then I tell you Linux, you might look at me like I was a Windows user saying that my OS is the best for servers. And still, with the advances on gaming on Linux and millions of Linux gaming devices sold by Valve in the form of the Steam Deck, buying a gaming laptop that runs Linux isn't a weird thing anymore. It actually makes perfect sense. And so that's what we have today, the Slimbook Hero. It's a Linux gaming laptop. It's portable, it's gamery, without all the RGB tackiness, it's solid, it's relatively lightweight, and so we're gonna look at what it can do. And also we're gonna look at this segue to our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Tuxcare, your all-in-one solution to make sure that your Linux fleet stays secure and up-to-date while reducing downtime to a minimum, thanks to kernel live patching, and additional support for end-of-life distributions. Speaking of which, if you have systems running on CentOS 7, you probably know it will reach end-of-life in June 2024, which means you only have a few months to plan a transition to another system. If that's a bit on the short side though, Tuxcare has you covered. They're launching their extended lifecycle support solution for CentOS 7 in early access, which will let you keep receiving security patches and updates to the core system and to a lot of critical packages, leaving you with a lot more time to prepare to migrate to a newer distribution. And if you're wondering why you should jump on that right now, it's because Tuxcare provides you with essential security patches for numerous unresolved high and critical risk vulnerabilities in CentOS 7. And these are gaps not addressed by the OS vendor. Ignoring these vulnerabilities may expose your organization to a significant cybersecurity risk. So don't wait too long. Click the link in the description of the video and secure your CentOS 7 systems for now and for years in the future. Okay, so let's start with an overview of the Slimbook Hero. It's the most gamery laptop I've seen from most Linux manufacturers. Not because it has the traditional Christmas tree aesthetic of crazy RGB, because it doesn't have that, but because it clearly emphasizes gaming as its main purpose. You've got Slimbook's gamerified logo with the penguin in a badge or a shield on the lid of the laptop and on the super key, and you have the WASD and arrow keys highlighted in white on the keyboard, so you see where you're supposed to place your fingers. And if you place them on the arrow keys to game, your weird and your shoulder must hurt pretty badly. Apart from that though, it's not too crazy. You don't get Alienware-esque design elements, no light bar or garish color choices. It's a laptop that you could absolutely use for anything else. Also, you can get it without the gamer branding. It's a 15-inch device with a 1440p display that refreshes at 165Hz, with an aluminium chassis, a 13th gen Intel i7 CPU, an RTX 4060 GPU, as much RAM as you could cram into a laptop, and very solid I.O. And of course, it's sold with Linux pre-install. You've got a choice between a bunch of popular distros, but you can also just install your own, especially a gamer-focused distro like Nobara, Chimera OS, or maybe even Holo ISO. So, this thing is chunky. It's not meant to be an ultrabook. It weighs 2.1 kilos, or 4.6 pounds, and it's pretty damn sturdy. Not much give or flex to this chassis thanks to the aluminium. It's all matte black, but it's not entirely aluminium. The bottom plate and the bezels around the display are made of plastic. Branding is decently minimal, you still get a big Slimbook Gamer logo on the lid, although you can ask them to not put it there, or to laser edge something else. And once the laptop's opened, the Slimbook logo under the display is dark grey on a black frame, so it is not really jumping at you. The hinge is really solid as well, with minimal wobble when typing. It's a 16x9 form factor, which is sort of better for gaming in my opinion, but a bit less good for productivity, where 16x10 is nicer. Bezels are pretty big on this thing though, and in the same form factor they could probably have fit a 16-inch 16x10 display instead, which I would have preferred. Very solid design. It's no ultrabook, but it is chunky enough that it's gonna give you plenty of cooling for long gaming sessions. Now, in terms of specs, this laptop is well equipped with a Core i7 13620H and an NVIDIA RTX 4060 with 8 gigs of VRAM. 
As always, before you flee before the green GPU vendor, remember that NVIDIA drivers have made leaps on Linux. And if you use a distro that packages them properly, you will not experience any issues, especially if you stick to X11, which you will probably want to do if you plan to game anyway. Seriously, the horror stories related to NVIDIA GPUs are either on older NVIDIA GPUs that aren't well supported with the current drivers, or they're related to Wayland. But X11 and NVIDIA, there are no issues here. Now you can spec the rest of the laptop up to your liking with up to 64 gigs of DDR5 RAM at 5200 megahertz and up to four terabytes of PCIe4 storage. You can also choose to dispose with the gamer branding and use a more unified black keyboard instead of having the white accents on the WASD keys. And you can pick any keyboard language you want. As per IO, on the left, you get a Kensington lock, a USB 2.0 port, probably for a mouse, a mic jack and a headphone jack. On the back, you have a mini display port, USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 with display port support, HDMI 2.1, a gigabit ethernet port and the barrel charger, since charging this thing over a USB-C would be a challenge. And on the right, there's an SD card reader and two type A USB 3.2 ports. Really solid IO, although I am always confused as to why USB 2 still exists on these types of laptops. Some people tell me it's because there are some incompatibilities with booting from USB devices with USB 3, and some tell me that it works better for some peripherals, but I never encountered any of these problems. Now on top of that, you get Bluetooth 5.2, Wi-Fi 6, a basic webcam and onboard mic that won't blow your socks off, dual speakers that are pretty decent, and a backlit keyboard with RGB, because gamer. Now let's focus on the performance aspect, because that's what most people will buy this device for. In terms of benchmarks, the CPU gets a score of 2733 in single core, and 11,625 in multi-core on Geekbench 6, which is really, really good. Compared to my main editing device, an Ultrabook with a Core i7-13700H, this is 9% faster in single core and 16% faster in multi-core. Surprising, because in theory, the 13700H is faster than the one the Slimbook Hero has, which is a 13620H. But since the laptop is bigger and has better cooling, it manages to get better performance over long periods of time, which I guess is really good. Battery life is decent with about seven hours of generic office work with Wi-Fi on, 50% brightness, and using the silent mode, which you can trigger by pressing the associated button. Of course, while gaming, you're getting about three hours at least for intensive AAA titles. Speaking of which, I ran the Horizon Zero Dawn benchmark and the one in Shadow of the Tomb Raider as well. In Zero Dawn, at the native 1440p resolution, without any upscaling and at the ultra preset, the Slimbook Hero managed a super smooth 60fps, often going above that and very rarely dipping below. For Shadow of the Tomb Raider, also at 1440p without upscaling and at the ultra preset, I got 99fps on average, sometimes going down to about 80 to 81 or up to 120. And this was using Slimbook OS, which is basically Ubuntu LTS with the latest NVIDIA drivers. You might get better performance with a more recent distro and more up-to-date Linux kernel and maybe even more up-to-date NVIDIA drivers, although from what I could see, this thing has the latest installed. Gaming at max settings can get pretty noisy here, although it's not super problematic, especially if you have headphones or a headset. Really, really good performance here. You'll be able to play anything and everything, and you'll be able to enjoy the benefits of the high refresh rate of the display on less demanding titles, or if you lower the resolution and the details a bit, which is always cool, because having a super high display refresh rate on a laptop when you can barely reach 60 is not super impressive. Now, as you've seen in the video, the display is really solid. It covers 100% of sRGB, it has a refresh rate up to 165Hz, and it's 1440p. Annoyingly though, it's either 165Hz or 40Hz, which means you can't really save battery life by lowering the refresh rate, because 40Hz is just too low for any type of use case. 
Still, the viewing angles are great, the colors are accurate, and it's matte with an anti-glare coating, which means reflections are kept to a minimum. Of course, it's 16x9, so it's better for gaming and watching videos than for office work and content creation, but it's still really good. The keyboard is solid enough, it's not the best I've used, this award goes to the laptop I'm using daily, the Tuxedo Infinity Book Pro 16, or its equivalent at Slimbug, the Executive 16, but on the Hero, it's still really good. The keys are very stable and they have good travel. They're quite clicky and the sound is pleasant and they bounce back super fast, it's very nice to type on. Of course here it's a Spanish layout that I really struggle with, but you can get any other layout you prefer. There's a numpad which will be a plus for some and a drawback for others. The whole keyboard is backlit with multiple colors you can pick from using the Slimbook RGB keyboard app. The touchpad is okay, it's a bit small for my taste, but I've been spoiled by the giant smartphone sized touchpad on my laptop. Still this one is smooth enough, it's precise, although it is very off-center which I find annoying in day-to-day -day use. Solid inputs here, they are not the best I've ever used on a laptop, but the keyboard will work very nicely for any form of office work or for gaming, it's good enough, and if you're gonna game on that, the touchpad will not be what you're gonna use, you're gonna use a mouse, but still, if you need to use the touchpad, it's good enough as well. Now, my review unit came with Slimbook OS, which is Ubuntu 22.04 LTS with the latest NVIDIA drivers, a few changes to the theme, and a few pre-installed apps from Slimbook to control the power profile of the laptop and the CPU, either using the graphical app or with the dedicated button next to the power button. You also get Slimbook gestures that let you configure touchpad gestures, even on X11, although they are not one-to-one -one and smooth like on Wayland. The RGB keyboard app lets you change the brightness and color of the backlight as well, as mentioned previously, and that's about it. There's no big piece of bloatware and all these apps can of course be uninstalled if you don't want them. And as per the general Linux gaming experience, installing Steam was as always a one-click operation and then games just installed and played as they would on any other operating system without any additional setup or configuration. Linux does make sense for gaming these days, as proven by the Steam Deck. You've got a lot of playable titles, whether they're on Steam or using an alternative third-party client like the Heroic Games Launcher, Lutris, or something else. You just install the game in one click, you click play, and it runs, unless it needs a specific anti-cheat, which might still not be supported. So, to finish on this device, it's a gaming laptop that runs Linux. It has all the nice things that you'd want, like an Ethernet jack for the best experience with online gaming, a really good display, a solid enough set of speakers, a separate headphone and mic jack for gaming with your friends and communicating, it has great I.O., excellent performance, and good inputs. It's also openable, repairable, and upgradable, which is a plus. It retails for 1400 euros, VAT included, at least in France, and you can pre-order it right now, it will ship at the end of December. The price seems fair if I compare it with other laptops available right now on Amazon in France. They're all around 1400 euros, with all added taxes as well, and similar specs. Although with the Slimbook, you're only getting 250 gigs of SSD with the base config, which will be small for gaming. But compared to other available laptops, you get better cooling because the laptop is actually thicker and has more heat pipes, and you get a higher refresh rate on the display. So if you want a gaming laptop and you're a Linux user, the Slimbook Hero is actually a very good choice. And gaming on Linux does make sense these days, just on Steam. You've got more than 12,000 games that are marked as officially compatible with the Steam Deck, which means they will also run on any other Linux distro. And some of these games that aren't certified on the deck will also run. So you've got more than 12,000 games. If your gaming is mostly on Steam, Linux is really a solid option nowadays. And this will conclude this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, or to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, there's always that dislike button and the comment section to tell me why. And if you really enjoyed the channel, you can support it. There are plenty of links in the description of the video to do just that from LibraPay, Patreon, PayPal, YouTube memberships, whatever. You know how this works. So thanks for watching, and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye!